What's up, y'all? I am Marcus, also known as EMB, and welcome back to From the Dark. Uh, you'll right away notice a couple little changes with our character here. We have Combustion now, and I've upgraded our Pyromancy Flame. Uh, what I did is, off-camera, I farmed up some upgrade materials, some large Titanite Shards and some green Titanite Shards. And I'm going to show you guys what I did right here. <clears throat> the Pyromancy Flame is something we already had. I just upgraded it at Laurentius, and I'll show that. And also, the spell that I bought, Combustion, came from Laurentius as well. Uh, and we'll we'll talk to him, and I'll remind you guys where that's at. But it's just useful for, for farming. It's useful for speeding this up. But this is the farming route, like, from this bonfire here in the depths. One easy way to get early large shards and green titanite shards is to kill these hollows right here dash through that area because those slimes will fall down behind you uh, these slimes can drop both large shards and also green shards so uh, they're also quite weak against combustion as you see so if you've upgraded your pyromancy flame it does pretty good you can do this with a normal weapon it's not too bad, uh, but I do recommend having a repair box if you're going to do it that way. A lot easier to just kind of burn these guys up with combustion. Oh, I missed one. We're alive. Not anymore. <clears throat> and I'll do this uh, once or twice more just to see if we can go ahead and get a drop so that I can demonstrate to you guys. And you notice our humanity is going up too because the boss of this area is uh, still alive. So we're still absorbing humanity from enemies around here. The game kind of naturally trying to push us towards having some humanity to be able to perform summons and stuff like that. This farm, uh, definitely not necessary, uh, but since I do want to use a variety of weapons in the playthrough, it seemed like a good idea for me to go ahead and do that off-camera to upgrade some weapons so that we could go ahead and use a couple of different ones. <coughs> one more time, and if they don't drop it, then whatever. Uh, one more thing I should note is that, uh, your item discovery, uh, buttons your item discovery right here uh, it it if you increase that you're gonna have a higher chance to find these shards and one way that you can increase your item discovery is by having more humanity so that zero eight humanity that I have in the top left over there uh, it, it's it continues to increase as you have more humanity your, your drop rate goes up up uh, 10 is kind of call it a soft cap like it's it's where you start to see some really really hard diminishing returns actually uh having one or two humanity is the most important and after that getting up to about 10 really helps out and beyond that you're not really going to see a whole lot of benefit oh there we go thank you guys so there's a large shard and looking at this i have 12 large shards and <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And 13 green titanite shards, so. Now I'm going to run back to Firelink Shrine, and you guys can just join me when we get there, okay? One thing I want to briefly say about combustion is that it's useful in narrow areas like this. Oh, fuck. Where you your swings would hit a wall. It can be useful there. But uh, another thing, it it bears some 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 similarities to Kyo's fire from King of Fighters, and that is no coincidence. <laughs> Pretty interesting, little inspiration there. Uh, and I guess one more thing too is that at this point in the game, it is so much more powerful than our other stuff. Like our our plus five weapons doing eighty. We can walk up here and burn this guy for 167. Like, it's it's seriously powerful. That's a plus five flame versus a plus five longsword. Pyromancy kind of a way for uh, any player can be able to produce some good damage using 
pyromancy, regardless of their, their character build. And once again, this is Laurentius. He upgraded my flame for me. And he is also where I, I purchased combustion. And I guess we might as well go ahead and buy some more of this stuff too. Flash Sweat, Fireball, Fire Orb. I'll probably leave Iron Flesh with him for now. We can also modify our equipment. Uh, upgrading your Pyromancy Flame in Dark Souls 1 only takes souls. That's enough for now. Yeah, it's really... Uh, it was something that I just I keep noticing with this playthrough of Dark Souls 1 is... The, 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 the game's design draws you to want to complete an entire area after you start it. Like, once you go into the Lower Undead Burg, and then it leads you naturally directly into the depths, and then the depths lead you direct, directly into the upper parts of Blight Town. And it's very easy to just sit there and play all through that in one go. But it's just funny how much the game was designed around you not really doing that. Around you going and having trouble with some enemies and getting stuck and going back to Firelink Shrine and then you, you notice some changes have happened and there's been like some developments like the clerics show up or somebody starts giving you a new tip uh, or like you explore around in the catacombs, you get stuck because of the skeletons, you explore around a little bit more, you find Andre and he's like, yeah. <coughs> Uh, use undead weapons if you go into the forest there's a divine blacksmith you go in the forest you get the ember you bring it back and he's like yeah okay I can make divine weapons for you but then you need green shards and like, where the hell can I get green shards and if you explore around and you fight some slimes in the depths then you find that you can get green shards there like it, it's based around this whole there's this whole different way to play through the game if you're struggling that I've never really appreciated before why, that's a fine ember you have there. I could smith some mighty weapons with one of those. Why not lend it to me? No, we haven't read it yet. I see. It is a pity. I'll be seeing you then. Be careful out there. And if we check it out, key item, large ember. Handled by the blacksmiths of Astora. Not not much lore here, but just straight up telling you who you need to take it to. Magnificent! You won't be disappointed. I can hardly wait to get started. Alright, now that he has these embers, we can upgrade to plus six using large shards, thanks to large ember. Uh, or also raw, which there's not really any point to go raw. Uh, raw gives you higher base damage, but removes the scaling, and it's generally a really bad idea. I don't, I don't know if it removes it. Maybe it just lessens the scaling, but it's generally a terrible idea. Uh, we, thanks to our divine ember, we can make a divine longsword now using green titanite shards. And you see here, uh, it says on the left, it's got 120 and zero, zero, zero. So 120 is the physical, zero is the, the magic, zero is the fire, zero is the lightning. And then the next one, Divine Longsword on the right, you've got 81 physical, so our physical damage has been dropped, but we now have 99 magic damage. We are actually going to, I wanna, I wanna reinforce our Claymore. See, how many do we need? We need nine or 10? Let's try nine. Oh man, I'm not gonna have enough souls to do this. Two, three, yeah, we're gonna have enough. I just need to get more souls. <laughs> more souls, offer your spirit. Yeah, we need you to reinforce our claymore. There we go. Now we have a plus five claymore, and at plus five, we can now modify it as well. And I think we're gonna make a divine claymore, actually. That, I think that's what we'll use when we're in the catacombs, because that's, that, that's pretty cool. So it's going to take from 154, it's going to go down to 105 physical, but it's going to add 127 magical. And now we can further reinforce that. Thanks to all these green shards we got, we can actually make it quite powerful. And you notice too that not only uh, do we have physical and magical base damage, but we also have physical and magical scaling as well. Scaling with our faith. Damn! 
Once again, I'm out of souls. Hold up, man. This ain't no good. Yeah, that's right. There we go. This is kind of well known at this point, but for those of you guys who don't know, due to the way damages work in this game, uh, even if we look at our right weapon one attack power over there, it says 292 because it's just adding together our um, our physical and our magic damage plus the scaling. It's just adding all of that together, but that's it. It that's not actually how it works. Like we're not each one of our physical attacks doesn't do 292 damage and then re reduced by enemy defense. Instead, uh, each damage component's actually separate. So each attack that we do, assuming it has a 1.0 modifier, is going to do uh, what like 139 physical damage and 158 magic damage. Uh, and each one of those is going to be reduced by the enemy's defense. So the enemy's physical defense is going to reduce. Uh, the physical part of it, and then the enemy's magic defense is going to reduce the magic component of the damage. And then it's kind of added together. I fucking forgot to... Oh, I can just kill the baller knights. That'll work. <coughs> I forgot the rest of the bonfire. Um, but the point of that is that the due to the way enemy defenses work, having the, the split damage total, like if we had a weapon that did 292 physical damage, it would be considerably more powerful. It would do considerably more damage than a weapon that has 292 total split across two different uh, damage types. This is kind of a standard for Souls games, so if you... Uh, playing Bloodborne, this, this this same system persists in that game as well. I mean, there there are some, some changes and stuff, but interesting development about, and this is, this is going to be something looking forward into Dark Souls 3 as well. I expect Dark Souls 3 to have a lot more, and I, I expect it to be more of a combination of Dark Souls 1 and uh, Bloodborne than it is like Dark Souls 2 just due to the fact that it's being directed by Miyazaki-san. Um, and so I expect concepts like the, the speed of the overall gameplay and things like that, I expect them to very much reflect uh, kind of the Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne tradition more than Dark Souls 2. Alright, let's upgrade this again. And one more. Alright, plus five divine is the highest that we can take this right now. Uh, we can go ahead and ascend our longsword to plus six as well while we're at it. Go get yourself killed. Neither of us want to see you go hollow. We would need a, uh, a different ember to continue ascending this weapon. Uh, I don't want to forfeit my humanity, so let's use a Homeward Bone. That's the convenient part of not resting at a bonfire, <laughs> is that you can very quickly and easily get back to the last one that you rested at. Alright, do you have anything to say, for, say to us before we go on our next mission? How did that old man make it back? Unexpected. But I suppose stranger things have happened. I believe that was a a glitch dialogue. Mm -hmm. What now? I'm not up for. Uh, I believe he is uh, supposed to be referring to Big Hat Logan right there, uh, but the trigger for that dialogue is not quite accurate. We actually haven't rescued Logan yet, but the dialogue got triggered. Uh, yeah, he also couldn't be talking about Petrus because Petrus hasn't left yet. Could be referring to Laurentius, but he's not really that old. I think that's a glitch dialogue. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, now, with our Divine Claymore, we can head down into the catacombs and seek the Rite of Kindling. We're not actually going to seek the Rite of Kindling. What we are seeking are some, some dialogues. Oh, shit. The, the Claymore never really seems to have as much range as I feel like it ought to have. There we go. Very 
Fairly well. Fairly well. Dropping some scimitars for me. It's nice of you fellas. Alright, down, down, down we go. Let's look and see what we can see. That's another really interesting point about the game, too, is, like, uh, a, a lot of the weapon upgrade types. They wanted to give you a bunch of different weapon upgrade types, but most of them are not useful because there's only a few enemies in the game that it really matters. Like, for example, here with these guys, divine, divine weapons can actually make a difference against these skeletons that are being revived by... Necromancers, right? And uh, later in the game, occult weapons, well, they help against like one or two enemy types in the whole game. These occult weapons actually work against. The damage bonus actually helps, you know? Uh, and it's just it's just funny to me that what you, what, in terms of game design, how many options that you're wanting to give to the player and then how many are actually meaningful based off of... Ooh, shit, there we go. How many are actually meaningful based off of the size of the game and the, the number and amount of enemies that you're actually able to create. It's an interesting problem because they can have lots of kind of thematic, like the, the uh, occult weapons and divine weapons. Oh, shit. <laughs> thematically are pretty good. They fit with the story. Three bursts of that and you're gone, son. They fit pretty well with the story and they give some, some interesting potential like variations to gameplay but due to due to the um, kind of the the production scope of the game like there's not enough enemy enemy types to really make all of them worthwhile so it it ends up not working too well <clears throat> just kind of one of my my small criticisms with the game is like okay you make a divine weapon for fighting a few different enemies I wanted to check out this door because after we pull the switch we actually won't be able to look at this people have tried to decipher what's written here before it's an interesting little contraption i wonder if we can run back here and see it while it's opening after we pull this or push this lever all right let's go let's go let's go no it's done already there's no way oh well all right that opens up here uh, and what I'm talking about, too, with the, the the production scope of the game. Really interesting. I've never looked up there before to see that light coming down like that. Wow. I'm always in too big of a rush to take out these skeletons and the necromancers. Uh, in interviews, um, Miyazaki-san talked about this quite a bit. That Dark Souls' production started before Demon Souls was like so highly critically acclaimed and became such a, a huge hit overseas for those of you guys who aren't really familiar with the way that game's kind of history has gone it originally didn't really sell that many that that many copies like it it it's it, over time it got its sales just through word of mouth people saying hey this game's fucking good people making videos for the game people talking about it on forums and stuff like that uh, over time, it kind of became very popular. But once it first, when it first started out, it wasn't really like some super huge smash hit success from the start. Round wooden shield crafted in Lordron, featuring an impressive red and white design. The giant trees of Lordron are distant offspring of the great stone arch trees. This shield inherits their properties, and the wood greatly reduces magic damage. Um, you know, it's funny too that. Not all wood resists magic damage. 
Like you see these, these are specifically related to the stone arch trees, so they have this 65 magic damage reduction. This one is not. It's just a, a normal wooden shield, and so it only has the 40 magic reduction. Which is more in line, it's less than, it's more than a normal metal shield, but it's less than the ones that are specifically related to the archstone trees. And that that's another aspect of the design that I really, really, really respect, is the fact that gameplay elements and story elements are not kind of separated from one another. Like, that, there are reasons for everything. Yeah, I know you're up there. I knew you were up there. I knew you were going to shoot me. Oh, I missed. That's a parry. Ooh. <laughs> I was going to get my ass parried there for a second. Wolf ring to the rescue. This whole area plays out so differently if you have divine weapons versus if you don't. That that's that's one thing. Like I'm I'm sitting here talking about how uh, some of the upgrade paths are just kind of really worthless. But at the same point, this area would work out so differently if you didn't have this divine weapon. This kind of patient baiting the skeletons out and killing them off permanently uh, while you slowly track down the necromancer. Uh, that style wouldn't really work. Instead, it's more of an issue of you're wanting to just rush the Necromancer. This is obviously one of my favorite weapons for you guys who've been around for a while. You know, it's a, it's a halberd, but it only does thrusting attacks. And halberd class weapons hit very hard for, for their swing speed. I mean, assuming you don't miss. Um... But since it only does thrusting attacks, it works well with the Leo Ring. You can get the uh, counterattack bonus with it, with all of its moves, with all of its attacks. You can stack that up with Red Tear Stone and Power Within if you want to get all crazy with it. And you can do some impressive damage with the Leo Ring. Kind of slowly taking these guys out. And at this point, we have hunted down the Necromancer. Where'd you go, bro? <laughs> Why are you running? Got us a little bit of humanity there. That's what that, that black absorption was. Um, yeah. It just... Normally all these skeletons are going to revive as long as he's alive. Unless you kill them with a divine weapon, which is what we did. But the, the whole area just plays out completely different. Because if you don't have a divine re weapon, then you need to rush him and get him killed as quickly as possible. But if you do have one, you can just kind of play it slow and patient and kill them as you go. These exploding skulls are annoying. Okay. Kill it. Did not quite kill it. I wish I was one-shotting these guys with these R2s, but... So here we find this switch that's going to flip the bridge over there, right? But really cool. You can see, get your first glimpse of patches from here as well. And the, the level design is just so dense. You can also see a hidden bonfire in here as well uh, near patches. It just the, the level design is so dense in Dark Souls. It's amazing. But the, the, the thing that I was speaking about with regards to <clears throat> uh, 
the fact that Demon Souls wasn't a huge hit while Dark Souls was still in development, uh, it meant that the development budget is wasn't as large as you might guess. But beyond that, uh, Miyazaki spoke a lot in the past too about kind of his struggles as Demon Souls started to become a major hit, and he's in the middle of trying to develop Dark Souls. Like it's it was one of those things where suddenly he had to do a lot more interviews and like the series was becoming fa uh, really famous and taking off overseas and his responsibilities increased a lot as a producer his responsibilities increased a lot and so uh, it became an issue for him during the development it's really really fun to see him talk about those sorts of, of things oh shit those sorts of things Aw. No, that's not what I want. Uh, forward R2, notoriously finicky in this game. Does not often. Sometimes it just doesn't want to come out. Oh, man, that's awesome. We got a Skull Lantern. Great. <laughs> that's a lucky drop right there. Skull Lantern of the Catacombs Necromancer droops from his long beard locks. This lantern alights the Tomb of the Giants, Nito's light-devouring domain of death. Also serves as a fire damage strike weapon. So, get you a little bit about Nito right down there, in the Tomb of the Giants, the domain of death. Uh, but also, now we can light up dark areas, which is seriously useful. Makes it easier to do things a little bit earlier. Of course, normally clearing this place out, you can get a hold of one of those, but... Here you can see, uh... Oh well, let me kill this guy first. There we go. You can see on this statue... Kind of the pinwheel masks. Let's see. Maybe. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Huh. That, that actually does help a little bit. So you can see the mask of the mother. And what I what kind of looks like the mask of the child is where the, the spikes are coming from. Kind of looks the same. I'd have to look at it again to make sure, but... The dead laid to rest here in the catacombs, but... Wow, I've never noticed that corpse, like, hugging that before. Seeking salvation, perhaps? That's... Or is that just a dead body that coincidentally landed there? No, it's not ragdolling. <laughs> it's easy to read too much into things sometimes in this game. Not sometimes. <laughs> Some people always read too much into it. I've been accused of it a lot in the past myself, and sometimes I have. Oh, please. please oh, please, jumping attack. Thank you. Starting to run low on Estus. I guess we should probably go for patches first. Another wall that we can open up. Uh. Oh no. I really miss regain. <laughs> it's something I love from Bloodborne because I can stay healed up all the time without having to spam my resources. Okay. So many skeletons. <laughs> that time I was not even trying to do it. Soul of a Proud Knight. Oh, so mean. I 
If I recall correctly, this will cause us to drop down. Yep. Oh, that one doesn't. Forgot about that crystal lizard. <laughs> I'm looking at the skulls embedded in the walls here. Domain of death indeed. We'll see more about uh, Nito as we continue as well. And here we're near the waterfall. And which one of these breaks? Right here? Yeah. Drops us down conveniently right back where we were before. There's the bonfire, there is patches, there's the waterfall. Really cool loop around. Just, I it just I'm 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 constantly in awe, even at this point, of the level design in Dark Souls. Like it's just so crazy because we we went in here and we traveled all the way around to the other side and dropped down over there behind the waterfall. It's just yeah, man, it's so good. <coughs> And the fact of the matter is, is we could hop down and take shortcuts by jumping down below as well. So it's just so many different ways to traverse the area. They're so densely packed with stuff and like the spatial relationships between everything end up working out because of the way it's put together and designed. Glad you fell. Up there, my beloved. We'll get to it. Alright. <laughs> I was curious if you could see that treasure from here, and you absolutely can. Sometimes it's it's a little bit of a, a, a trap though like they'll show you something a little bit earlier than you could actually access it, right? <laughs> and this is another visual stunt Because it looks if you're just running straight it looks like you're gonna be able to keep going But then the stairs just lead you to your absolute demise So dirty Plus, when you're coming at it from this direction, you can't even see the path on the left. If you're running, you'll just completely miss it. <laughs> and now that bridge automatically flips. Gee, golly gee. see the switch over there near the waterfall god this area is just so great I never really stop and take my time to appreciate it because of all of the damn uh, rushing around to kill necromancers but I'm trying to look for any hints that might be found here because that's a fake wall, that's a hidden wall. You attack it and you can bust it up and get through it. We already know that there's a bonfire over there. I guess that's all of the hint that you get. Of course, if you're playing online, then you might see a message from somebody who's just happened to haphazardly find it, but...
And here's our hidden little zone of safety. Right out there is... You may not be able to see it from here, but... This is the area near where that first switch was. We were peeking in from the other side of that wall earlier. Only that one rock that conveniently plays boulder, stopping us from skipping ahead. not like clerics, so we are not a cleric. No, no. Well, that's strange. Um, I know what it is. You've come for the dream kids, haven't you? Well, whatever it is, this place is treacherous. You watch your step. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same patches as from Demon Souls. Not patches the hyena. This is trusty patches. As they've said many, many times. Uh, and yeah, patches was also an armored core. Do it, patches. Oh, patches, you're not going to try to get me. Uh-oh. I can't remember if he only does it if you say you are a cleric. I thought he did it either way. Huh. I guess you actually have to say you're a cleric. Uh, Patches will try to flip the bridge and kill you. Well, anyway. Rolling over here. Pick up my baby, the great scythe. Uh, people give me so much shit for this scythe because I have a video declaring it best dex weapon. Uh, <coughs> even though I said many times in the video, hey, you need to use whatever moveset works for you, etc, etc, etc. People ignore those parts and just focus on... That's the best one! <laughs> Drop down here. Which puts us out... A little bit ahead. Getting closer to pinwheel here. Oh shit, that took off a lot. Holy crap. Counter hit while, or not counter hit, but attack of opportunity rather while I was running. Oh no, that's probably not a good time. I want to get back up to patch. Oh, I can't go through this way either, can I? Oh yeah, okay. Alright, I forgot. They'll let you go through backwards. And more up to date patches. I, patch is really not going to flip it on me, huh? That sucks. Maybe I should have said I was a cleric, but then that screws us out of a dialogue later, so. Yes, it did. <sighs> Motherfucker. Screwing me out of my lore. Is himself being an undead. I guess he was. I guess when he it, the the bridge was actually unflipped, and then he flipped it for us, and that's messed up this trigger. I guess. We're all the same side. That's it. 
That's the that's the main reason we came down here, just to have an opportunity to meet Patches in the catacombs, uh, because <clears throat> a lot of people actually miss him here. Uh, we're not going to clear this yet because there is another dialogue we can get with the clerics back up at Firelink. If we do so, if we go back and talk to them before finishing the area. Oh. All right. And one of the greatest views in the game is just simply coming out of the catacombs. It is because it's something that normally I save this area for so late in the game that I can just warp out. And so this this is a vista that I don't don't honestly get to see too often. Interesting dead tree over there. Hmm. All right. And now we're back to fire lane. Great. If we speak with the clerics at this point, if we speak with Petrus, we can prompt these guys to move on. We've seen all of their dialogues at this point that we can access other than by attacking them, of course. What do you say, Petrus? Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. So, I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. Interesting that Petrus uh, calls them his guests, too. He clearly, or rather, it, I shouldn't say clearly, because it is a speculation, but he seems to be stationed here in Lordron, and then uh, clerics, undead clerics, come on pilgrimage into the catacombs, and he's kind of supposed to be their host or their guide, is the way it always seems to me. Rhea is the youngest daughter of the good house of Thurland. Those young knights are her old schoolmates, but I'm not sure what to make of them. I'm afraid they may be a bad influence. So, the youngest of the House of Thurland. Very, very important kind of... I don't know, I don't know if we can say royal, royal daughter, but... Very, uh... Noble, noble blood, put it like that. Oh, it's you. We're to leave momentarily. The catacombs aren't exactly my idea of a good time, but what can one do? I do hope we meet again, Rary or not. Did you see them? The three young clerics headed for the catacombs to seek kindling. Kindling is the art of feeding bonfires. The poor young girl sent down into a tomb. What a terrible mission she is burdened with. How the hell do you know about kindling? That's supposed to be a secret. Or at least according to Petrus, that's supposed to be a secret of the Church of Thurland. Are you a spy? Oh, hello. Well, you certainly are keeping at it. Myself? I'm fine. Let's get started straight away. I wish to do what I can to locate Master Logan. I am aware of my shortcomings, but I cannot very well just sit around here and rot. Oh, do not worry. I have considered our relationship. I will only leave after I have taught you all the sorceries that I know. I shall count myself lucky if I manage to locate Logan. Or even return here in one piece. Talking about his master Logan, but also straight up telling you what the trigger for him. <laughs> Saying, okay, don't worry. I'm gonna wait until you buy everything, and then I'm gonna go. Two things are required. First, sec, then, oh, goodbye then. Do stay safe. Really interesting that he knows about kindling. It either means that it's not quite the secret that Petrus is making it out to be, or that old Griggs over there knows a little bit more than maybe he ought to. Laurentius doesn't really comment on the clerics. Oh, hello there. I'll play, as always. Keeping to himself as always, I suppose. Goodbye then. Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go. I will catch you guys on the next From the Dark, where we will probably be going down in the depths to take on the Gaping Dragon and also encountering, for the first time, the infamous Dark Wraith Kirk. The infamous Dark Wraith.